These days, it's pretty easy to criticize San Martin for their designs, or maybe lack thereof, as most of their watches are straight one-for-one -one homages, generics, clones, whatever you want to call them. Yet, at the same time, it's pretty hard to criticize the quality of those same watches. What they lack in creativity, they make up for in execution. In today's watch, the SN052-G-JS is a perfect example of this, as it pairs a Tudor black base style design with mechanical seagull movement and the build quality that San Martin has become known for. Creating a watch that any snowflake loving value hunter will find hard to ignore. And to be clear, I'm talking about the snowflake handset here, not overly sensitive college kids. And I also need to point out that this watch was provided by San Martin and I don't have to send it back, hence the promotional tag. Anyway, let's talk specs. For this one, you're looking at a 40mm wide case with a 49.5mm lug to lug. Although, it is worth noting that the tachometer bezel is a little bit wider and sticks out just slightly with a width of 41 millimeters. And I think because of that and the slightly longer lug to lug, it wears more like a 41 than a 40. At least that's how it felt on my 7 and a quarter inch wrist. It is a watch that overall is pretty comfortable, one with a very pronounced presence, as well as being pretty well balanced on its bracelet, despite it being a little tall at 14 millimeters. Although that is 14 with a domed sapphire and fairly empty looking closed case back. Rounding everything out, it also has a 20 millimeter lug width, 100 meters of water resistance, a Seagull ST1901 mechanical chrono movement, weighs in at a solid 160 grams on its bracelets, give or take a link or two, and is currently selling for around 325 US. As for the watch itself, it's pretty much what you'd expect. The case is very retro subby. Stubby angled lugs, paired with brushed sides, top, and a narrow polished chamfer running down each side. Honestly, pretty standard for a Tudor homage these days, as I think Tudor really only makes one type of case. With the one exception here being this large tachometer bezel. Now the bezel is using a blue ceramic insert to match the dial, which is then paired with white markings. The bezel is something I'm going to talk about later, but short version is that it's very eye-catching and shiny and pronounced, at least with this colorway. Now over at the right, there is a signed crown and matching pushers. While the pushers are screwed down to help secure them in the water, the crown is not. But before anyone gets annoyed at that, they did it for a really good reason. Because this is a mechanical, meaning you have to wind it. In San Martin learned the hard way with a previous chronograph, where when that one was fully wound up, you couldn't turn it anymore to secure the crown. So here they just left that out to avoid the whole issue. The pushers though are very responsive, which is kind of the whole reason people love mechanical chronographs. Just that instant feel and response when you use them. Quartz never quite feels the same. Although I should point out that when these pushers are screwed down, they are a little bit hard to unscrew while you're actually wearing it. But that is something that's fairly standard. And then we have the dial, which is nicely done. The applied indices are very distinct as they rise out of the dial with a good amount of height, whereas the subdials sink just slightly with the sunburst etched silver curvature, giving the entire thing a nice sense of depth from the various layers, angles, and textures, which is then all paired with a standard snowflake handset, as well as the red tip second hand, adding just enough color to what is otherwise a blue and white color scheme. Now, earlier I mentioned that this was a one for one but that's not entirely accurate, as San Martin did make a few minor changes, other than adding their logo. Like, there's no date, which you could say gives the watch a nice symmetric feel. Although honestly, the real reason they didn't include one was because the movement doesn't have it. Another thing is that this colorway doesn't exist in Tudor's world. I mean, they have blue watches, just not a blue chrono or a green chrono. And along the same lines for those San Martin colorways with silver subdials, San Martin decided to pair them all with silver hands, and that I think is a mistake. They really should have switched to black hands, because the silver subdial hands are pretty hard to read against that silver background. There's just no real contrast here. They're still somewhat readable, but they could have, and more importantly, should have done something else. But other than that, the watch looks great and is really well done. And I think sometimes that doesn't get emphasized as much as it should. 
because a lot of us reviewers just wind up taking their build quality for granted after seeing so many. As a loom nut, one of the best things about San Martin is their commitment to good loom, unlike a lot of other brands on AliExpress. Here, the dial is fantastic, lasting long into the night, while the hands themselves are still pretty good being able to keep up with the Seiko Diver. Although ideally, I think the hands should last as long as the dial, but overall still good. Movement wise, this one's using a Siegel ST1901 mechanical chronograph. So hand widers only, which these days has become a lot more common to see. And that's pretty cool as it is a really cool, interesting movement. It's actually based on the older Swiss Venus 175 movement. Although when it really comes down to it, it's also the only option if you want an affordable non-quartz chronograph right now. As most other auto and mechanical chronographs, and especially name brand chronographs, will run you three to four times that. As for the bracelet, it's good and what you'd expect. Standard oyster style bracelet, solid links secured with screws, solid female end links, great taper and a good milled clasp. The only thing that's really missing is the new on the fly adjustable clasp that San Martin's putting in some of their divers. Now, if you've been following my more recent San Martin reviews, you may have noticed a common trend where I haven't actually been picking the watches they've been sending. They just seem to show up and I have no idea what's coming. And the reason I want to point that out is just to emphasize that I didn't pick this one when I tell you I don't really like it. And it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I'm kind of lukewarm to it. In particular, the design. Now, I fully appreciate the quality of the watch, but it's one that's just not for me. It's one I haven't really warmed up to, which is strange because generally I like blue watches. And with this one, I think it really comes down to the tachometer. Where in particular with this blue one, that shiny ceramic bezel with its blue and white color scheme is very pronounced. To the point that I actually find it distracting from the dial. Which in a lot of ways is just going to be my personal preference, my personal quirk. Because if you look around at the greatest and most well-loved chronographs out there, almost all of them have a pretty pronounced tachometer. And this is why I've always said watch collecting is more of a journey than a destination that you really don't know about something until you've had it on your wrist for a bit. And that sometimes you don't really figure out what you like until you've tried a number of different watches. And something I've learned is that I really don't like a pronounced tachymeter. For instance, check out my Hamilton Intramatic. This is a chronograph I love. The tachymeter is there, but it's not really front and center. It's more in the background. Or this Casio I've been enjoying lately. Again, it's got a tachymeter, but it's also much more subtly integrated into the design. Plus, my Grail chronograph is a Tag Monaco, which also doesn't have one. So again, this one's just not me. And I think this also points out one of the great things about homage watches that sometimes people forget, and that it's a great way to try things out. After all, it's a much easier lesson to learn here than after spending, say, six grand on a tutor. Bottom line though, brass tacks, it's a San Martin. It's a watch that's extremely well made for the price. It's a $300 watch that'll rival most Seikos that cost twice that much or more. So if you like the design and you're looking for a budget friendly, affordable watch, it's pretty hard to go wrong here. But what do you think about the San Martin as well as the Seagull 1901 movement in general? Let me know down below. As well as if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.